Hello and welcome to our entry for the 2024 Practical Ethics and Responsibility Competition. We are students from St Ambrose College and we have chosen our topic to be on whether junior doctors are ethically responsible for jeopardising patient care when striking. According to Oxford Dictionary, a strike is defined as a refusal to work, organised by a body of employees as a form of protest. There are many reasons for industrial action, including low pay, long working hours and the current economical circumstances. In the UK, the current law states that an employee has the right to take official action. This is further solidified by the UN's Declaration of Human Rights, particularly Articles 24 and 25, which outline the employee's right to satisfactory labour conditions, meaning they have adequate leisure time and work reasonable hours. A strike would then coincide with these articles and thus is a human right. In 2016, the Health Secretary proposed a new working contract to have a seven-day NHS which ordered most healthcare services to be available from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. Monday to Saturday. Thus, healthcare workers, including junior doctors, partook in the national strike to oppose the new bill as it impacted their motivation, quality of life, and increased the risk of error. Adversely, not only have the working uh, hours increased, but junior doctors have not seen any pay rises in the past decade. A survey was carried out by the union Unison in which 77% of staff under this union felt underpaid. Latterly, the overarching issues are directly impacted by rising inflation and cost of living crisis. So one could argue that doctors have an ethical need to strike that overrides any ethical responsibilities during these times. The four pillars of medical ethics are moral guidelines that all doctors are expected to follow. Expected to follow. Justice, making sure that all medical practice is fair, no malfeasance, doing no harm, Autonomy, the right of patients to accept or deny care, and beneficence, doing good at all times. We argue that doctors on strike do not violate any of these pillars because ethically they are promoting justice, which would enable them to further promote other pillars such as beneficence more effectively. People who argue against the strikes may also comment on how they go against the pillar of non-malfeasance as they cause harm to patients in the short, in the short term. However, as stated by the GMC, Lawful industrial action is permitted within good medical practice, so strikes are not dangerous to patients' safety. It is important to consider the opinion of the GMC, which is an independent body that sets moral and practical standards for doctors across the UK. Improved conditions for the NHS workers will improve motivation by alleviating some of the stress which 25% of doctors in 2016 felt had a serious impact on their mental health. Most would agree that the conditions for junior doctors are not representative of their value to society. The counter would be that these doctors begin their journey with the knowledge of these conditions, as information regarding the pay of junior doctors is readily available online, so therefore they cannot complain about a set of circumstances in which they actively decided to work towards. This does not change the fact that they are underpaid. With respect to patient care, strikes can be viewed as inconvenient yet manageable. Turning away patients with non-threatening conditions or manageable conditions is efficient. For example, in 2016, when there were 9% fewer admissions, doctor strikes do not add a significant overall degradation of patient care, especially considering that junior doctors are only one of many parts of a multidisciplinary team. We have illustrated that junior doctors aren't at all ethically responsible for any jeopardy towards patient care while striking, as it is a last resort for them to have their voices heard, improve patient care and improve working conditions. The cause of these strikes and the ethical responsibility relies with the Department of Health and Social Care, which are liable for any administrative faults within the NHS.